Hi, my name is Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. Let's take a look ahead to the upcoming inflation report coming out of the Eurozone. It's going to be the big ticket item this week in Europe. And certainly it's going to lay the groundwork for ECB rate cuts in the months to come. Will it come in April, June, later in the year? Well, this should really help inform us on that. But let's look first and foremost at exactly how we can drill down into the data and look for what we're expecting this time around. So first and foremost, here is the usual chart that I provide, which essentially gives you three sections. The top section shows you exactly where we are on a year on year metric. So 2.59, essentially 2.6 is what you'll see on an economic calendar. That comes off the back of a month on month reading last time around of 0.63, which was above anything we'd seen in the prior months and much higher than what we're used to. Nonetheless, we're still on course to get back down towards that 2% target in the very near future. And that's highlighted by the third pane at the bottom, which shows that if you take the trajectory of the last 11 months and you just expect a similar figure, the average number of what we've seen over the last, nine, uh, last 11 months, we just see an average number for this month then that will take us back down to target. And that's because the figure we're seeing stripped out from last year, which is March 2023, is 0.91. So bear in mind, okay, we saw 0.6 last time, but you know, normally we're seeing numbers, we're seeing negative numbers, we're seeing 0 0.2s, 0 0.1s, 0 0.3s. 0 0.6 isn't necessarily that normal. So if we were to get any of those other options, then we're going to see a dramatic decline in terms of Eurozone inflation. But what do markets expect? Well, markets expect a 0 0.9 figure. Bear in mind that I'm recording this on the Thursday because we've got the bank holiday on Friday. And generally, Thursday figures on the economic calendars are less reliable. So I would implore you to keep a close eye out on how the economic calendars look in terms of expectations because trading and economics, generally one of the early ones to come out with the uh, expectations, will update gradually as essentially more economists put in their predictions and then the averages um, sort of settle out. But the early figures point towards a relatively lofty number of 0 0.9. Um, for me, I think there's a good chance that we see, you know, we haven't seen a figure of 0 0.9 since this time last year. So, you know, are we going to see something similar? Time will tell, but certainly it would be out of the ordinary. And if we don't, then we could see a more significant decline the markets are expecting because markets currently, going by early estimates, pointing towards year-on-year -year figure remaining steady at 2.6. I don't think that's likely myself. In terms of the core readings, with 3.1 is the current annual core figure. Um, but this one's even more interesting because whilst markets are expecting a decline around about a, a figure to sort of 2.8 kind of thing, if you look at the figure that's being stripped out from last time, 1.25, you know, that is absolutely massive considering the target is 2% uh, for an, a, an annual 12 months worth of inflation. Well, we saw 1.25 in March alone last year. And as that strips out, then we can replace it with a more healthy number. Um, and the lower that monthly number is, the bigger the decline in terms of the annual reading. Um, and as we've seen here on the third section, the 11 month annualized once again points towards a move back down to target this month. Essentially, once that, zero, uh, once that 1.25 is stripped out, the expectation is that we could get back down to 2% if we see an average monthly figure this time around, going by the average of what we've seen over the past 11 months. So for me, it does point towards a possibility of markets repricing towards an April rate cut. Whether that happens or not remains to be seen. But, you know, what would be another factor to watch? Well, in the week just gone, we have just seen uh, euro area wage growth data coming out. It comes out on a quarterly basis. And we saw a welcome decline in that figure. As you can see here, the inflation rate sort of continues on in this chart because the wage numbers are relatively lagging. Um, but the fears that wage growth was going to really outstrip inflation and that was going to hold back the ECB because they think, well, OK, inflation's low, but wages are high and therefore we've got underlying inflation pressures. Those sort of fears have been allayed. Um, so this, again, points towards the possibility of the ECB being more open to rate cuts. As we know, it's been you know a number of months where we've seen Christine Lagarde constantly essentially batting back the idea of rate cuts. Whereas, you know, you and I, when we're looking at these charts, we know in a couple of months time or a few months time, we were going to see inflation back down to target. And that really does appear to be approaching now. 
In terms of market expectations, this is the London Stock Exchange Group's icon platform and the expectation, the market pricing for these different uh, ECB meetings. Currently attributing an 82% chance that we see rates steady in April and then essentially an 81% chance that we see rates cut in June. So markets really heavily pricing towards that June meeting. And it probably is the sensible option because um, what we would need to see here is a really dramatic move in terms of inflation back down to target for the or back down towards target for ECB members to think, OK, do you know what? If the job's done. Let's start cutting interest rates. Now, bear in mind that they do have the basis of a relatively weak economic outlook and sort of picture compared to the US. So there is the, the basis for them to, to perhaps act more hastily than, than their US counterparts. Um, but nonetheless, I think the potential move for this uh, event is towards a repricing in the April rate cut. So if we were to see a significant decline in that year-on-year -year figure because the monthly figure comes out relatively normal and we start getting back towards that 2% target, then we would likely see that 82% chance of a rate uh, pause or a different way of saying is 18% chance of a rate cut. That would likely reprice and that repricing would likely benefit the likes of the DAX. It would likely come to the detriment of the likes of the euro. But if we see inflation coming in high or hot, well, that's essentially what markets are expecting now anyway, because the early estimates that I'm seeing pointing towards the 0.9 monthly figure, which is not something we've seen over the past 11 months. Um, so certainly something worth bearing in mind, the possibility of it coming in low and a repricing for that April meeting doesn't mean we have to actually, you know, you could say, well, it can reprice all at once. They're not going to cut in April. Maybe not, but you don't necessarily, if you're trading around this event, you don't need to wait out until the actual ECB meeting to see whether it happens or not. It's just the shifting in market expectations does cause a repricing in terms of the, the assets associated with it. So if we wanted to trade this, how might we trade these different eventualities? Well, let's look first and foremost at the obvious one of the lot, which is the DAX. Now, how's the DAX going to react if we were to see a significant decline in inflation? and a higher chance of a rate cut, um, well, it'd probably move higher, which is what it just continues to do. This is the daily time frame. You know, it's been an absolutely epic few months here for people that are holding the DAX. And day upon day upon day, it keeps to move, moving towards the upside. So for charts like this, you know, where do you find the top? You know, the problem is with people trading something like this, they'll say, you know, okay, mean reversion, soon enough, it's going to pull back. And you start trying to look for any signs that this is topped out, and you're going to see this massive pullback. Well, you know, you could have been doing that within this move. And yeah, maybe you get a piece of this. But it didn't last, and you might have held on for too long, and soon enough you're offside. So the trend is your friend. And ultimately, you need to find the right time frame for you. And the right time frame on this occasion, I believe, is probably the hourly time frame, because the hourly time frame is where you've kind of got that trend showing up. Um, and you see these sort of pauses and these consolidation phases and everything. And that's where you can draw on your swing lows to sort of ascertain whether the trend is continuing or whether you're going to be uh, pulling back. So for the near term, you know, we're consolidating here. This is Thursday, like I said. If we pull back, that wouldn't necessarily concern me. And that could potentially be a buying opportunity for bulls. What we'd need to see is a breakdown below 18360, this swing low that we have here. And if we do so, that points towards a wider retracement coming into play. And until that happens, the bulls remain firmly in charge for this market. From a wider perspective, this is the DAX against the S&P 500. So the ratio between the two, and we can see that the German index is super cheap by uh, relative valuation perspectives on a sort of historical basis. You know, these levels are not the kind of things that you see very regularly and in, and generally, whether it be via weakness in US indices or strength in German indices, you generally see the DAX being bought up relative to the S&P 500 around these areas. Does this mean that we're going to go on another big run uh, for the DAX relative to the S&P 500? 
Maybe, but you know, of course, we already have seen a very strong run here for the DAX. But if we were to point towards the ECB uh, suddenly becoming uber dovish because they're looking at the possibility of massively overrunning beyond that 2% target towards the downside. Well, that could be the kind of thing that really does light a fire under the DAX even more so. And from a historical sort of valuation perspective, I know the economies are very different. So there's some justification for this over recent years. But certainly we're back at levels where uh, the DAX has generally been deemed very cheap relative to its US counterparts. If we were looking for potential weaker than expected reading in terms of inflation and a, and a heightened chance that we're going to see the ECB cut rates and a repricing for that April meeting, how could that play out in terms of euro weakness? Well, this is the euro against a whole bunch of currencies. It's a good way to sort of take an overview uh, for some of these markets uh, and see exactly where the setups may be. One interesting one here is EuroCAD. I just wanted to drill into that for you a little bit. So EuroCAD, let's just get it up here. There we go. So EuroCAD, as we can see here, you know, from a long-term perspective, we've seen this, you know, big decline, 2021, 2022. Then we saw that big rally. Now we're just in sort of no man's land. We're in chop, right? And so that's fine. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not tradable. Obviously, it's nice to trade a trade trend, but um, we're not in that at the moment. Instead, we're sort of coming back from the top end of this messy consolidation phase. You'd say the bottom end is probably around these kind of levels, right? And the top end's around sort of maybe, maybe you can grab a few more of those tops. But um, we're coming back from the top end of that. And that points towards space for downside. Now, why the Canadian dollar? I think the Canadian dollar is an interesting one because we've just seen strong Canadian GDP coming out. That puts less pressure on the Bank of Canada to cut interest rates. They typically move alongside the Federal Reserve, who I think are likely to be patient going forward. Um, and we're seeing strength in terms of the energy markets, which, of course, the Canadian dollar is uh, highly correlated at times uh, with the value of crude. And we have been seeing crude doing well. So as you can see here, I've sort of got a mock trade put on here. It's already running in in, uh, in profit on that. But anyway, I mean, more to the point, it's let's just adjust it to where we are now. You know, I'm sort of showing that we could rally and then this will be an interesting area for shorts or even if you didn't even have the patience, you know, I think there's a good chance we've sort of topped out over the near term. And if we did see a weak uh, inflation gauge coming out of the Eurozone, there's a possibility of downside for this pair. So as long as we don't break out through that resistance level that we have here, which is 1.8. Let's just move. Well, sorry. Uh, so it's 1.47. Sorry. Um, I'm just getting confused which is which out of these two lines, but nonetheless, 1.4739. Um, but irrespective, I mean, look, what, what we're looking at here is a market that seems to have topped out. It's set within a sort of relatively choppy uh, phase, uh, but in the top end of that. So I do think there is room for maneuver towards the downside. And I think this would be an interesting one if we were to see a weak inflation gauge coming out. Another one that I wanted to look up is euro against the US dollar. Of course, I think well, whilst we've seen um, markets previously expecting seven rate cuts this year, it's now down to expectations of three. And I think it might even be less than that in the end. We've seen comments from Fed members. The most recent is Waller, who's pretty much said that he is happy to be patient. Inflation doesn't point towards him wanting to cut interest rates right now. And so, you know, that forms the basis of a potential dollar strength story which has been playing out and there's a good chance that we could see it play out further so in terms of euro dollar how are things going here well we've broken through the support level of 1079 nearer term you can see here this sort of recent pop and rally you know what level we want to look out for here is probably this major one up here but near-term traders might be sort of hanging their hat on this kind of area here um but essentially near term upside, you know, I think there is a good chance if we're looking for a, a market that could see some weakness coming into play, 
you know, this could be an area for it. The caveat here, of course, is that if we were to see a weak inflation gauge coming up, then that would be relatively risk on for markets and risk on uh, doesn't necessarily benefit the US dollar. So there are two sides to the coin on this one. Um, so Eurocad probably a little bit more interesting on that perspective. But I'd keep an eye out on energy markets at that time. Of course, OPEC meeting coming out this week as well. Um, so that's another thing to consider. But plenty to sink our teeth into. It's a really interesting meeting uh, for or meeting report for us to be following. And just from a sort of base effects perspective, there's the possibility of massive downside in terms of this Eurozone inflation reading as we move back down towards that 2% target. We could even see 2% hit if we see these monthly readings low enough. If that happens, we could see really significant moves to the market, whether it be, say, the likes of the DAX or whether it's the euro. Um, but certainly how it comes out should be a key determinant of market expectations of the ECB going forward. I hope this has been useful and it's going to be a particularly interesting period here for European markets and currencies.